Hello and welcome to the course of HDL Digital Circuit Design. Today's topic is step-by-step -step guide for simulating a JK flip-flop in Verilog using Xilinx Vivado tool. Myself, Shilpa Kedarudravar, Assistant Professor, School of ENTC Engineering, FIT Academy of Engineering, Ayandi, Pune. So, moving ahead with today's point. Now, in last uh, video, we have seen what is JK flip-flop, its truth table, and how to implement that using uh, behavioral modeling style that to fails as well as the case statement. So this uh, video I have already uh, recorded. The link of that I will be uh, putting in the description box. Now for this test bench also we have gone through. So how to write a test bench that is also explained. So kindly go through that video. Now I will be moving ahead with the tool. So here you need to click on Vivado 2014.4. To, uh, Once you are clicking will be getting this particular window. Now purposefully I have already created a JK flip-flop uh, code over here in the tool. Just for your understanding, I will be creating over here and I will be switching to that particular window so that there will not be lengthy video. So first click on create new project. Next, here you can mention the name, whatever you want to give to your project. Next. RTL project, you can click over here, then select your properties of the device you are having, so RTX 7 which is the board we are having in the lab, again RTX 7 that is subfamily, package CSG 324 that is package type is CSG and 324 pins are there to that particular IC, dash 1 that is the speed grade and this is what is your board. So finished, once that has been done, you will be getting this window where I told you this is the process window, this is the code window, uh, source window, this is what is the error window and here you will be writing a code. So at this moment you are able to see summary over here. Now click to this add source and click on add or create design sources. So here by clicking you will be able to see uh, the Verilog code. So Verilog I'm, I have selected the preferred language and I can give the name to the Verilog module. So here file name, whatever you are giving, it will be coming as a module name to your code. So OK and finished. You can give here J as a input, K as a input. That way you can specify. Now I'll be copy pasting the code, whatever I have told to you in the last session. So same thing, I'll be copy pasting. That's why I have not created each and everything. So here you are able to see this is what is the uh, Verilog file is getting created. So now I will be copy pasting my code. So which is this one using if else statement. So this is what is the code we have written. Once that has been done. Now one thing you need to remember here. This is what is the symbol we have used. This is not a symbol we have used previously. So this is called as a non-blocking statement. So whenever equal to sign is there, it is a blocking statement and whenever assignment like less than equal to uh, sign is there, it is the non-blocking statement. So what is the meaning of no blocking and non-blocking that I will be covering in the coming lectures. So till that you just write it non-blocking statement uh, instead of blocking one. So this particular symbol is mandatory to write. Now over here you are able to see that code is written where this is module input output as behavioral modeling style we are preferring so we need to write output as a rich data type. Here positive edge clock, positive edge reset we are writing a code in asynchronous uh, reset uh, way and here if reset is 1 so reset is active high. So what is the meaning of active high reset? Whenever we are giving reset as a 1 it will be resetting the circuit and when reset is 0, it will be performing its own operation. So that's why active high reset means it will be resetting the functionality when reset is 1. So that you need to remember. So this is point to be noted. So we are given the option when jk equal to 0, 0, 1, 1, when uh, j is equal to 1, when k equal to 1, what is the condition that we have written and we have ended. So once that has been done, there is no error you are able to see. Once that has been done, you can go ahead with the elaborate design. So here you are able to see, here you are able to see gate level netlist. So how your circuit is getting implemented that you will be able to see over here. So again I will be trying some error it is showing.
So here you will be able to see gate level netlist. So click on this. If by default this particular screen is opening, click on default layout. So you will be able to see how that circuit is getting implemented using the uh, MUX and other format that is LUT. This is what is the structure. Now again go to your project manager. Now you need to write a test bench and for that you need to click on add sources and click on add or simulate uh, sources. Again create file, give the name, purposefully I am starting with the TB, JK, then finish. You can assign it over here or you can just leave it. Once that has been done, I'll be in the simulation, I'll be clicking on this, you'll be getting this test bench file is getting created partially. Now you need to copy paste. Now in the code we have written, we have taken. So just I'm copy pasting that code. Copy. Paste. Once that has been done, here you are able to see that these are the input which are considered as a reg over here and outputs are considered as a wire data type and this is what is the port mapping we have done j is connected to j k is connected to k sometime it will be giving you error if that is the case you can write in the different way that i'll be telling you just will be checking whether it is showing you error or not this is what is the initial block there are three initial blocks have been written. One first is for generating clock, second is for generating reset, and third is for generating your J and K inputs. So now I am saving it. It is getting linked with your UUT. I am clicking on this. I'll be checking whether it is showing you a run simulation or not. If it is showing error, we can I will tell you how to write in the another way. Okay, it is not showing you error. So once that has been done, you are able to see over here the waveform. Now, how to check this waveform? In the previous video, I told you how to go ahead with the simulation and how to understand it. First, just assign it properly. Clock, you need to take it first. As a priority wise, you will be taking this. Reset also, you can take it first. Then, J and K are the input and Q is the output. So I will be just zooming it so that it will be clear for you to understand here you are able to see that asynchronous reset is there means whenever the reset is one output will be zero that q will be zero and qn will be one so here you are able to see just concentrate on this pointer if reset is one clock is there your output is what it's a zero for q and one for qn Whatever may the condition of J and K is over there. Your output will be Q equal to 0 and QN will be 1. Now when reset is 0. Now your circuit is working on positive edge of clock. And when reset equal to 0, it will be performing normal operation. So here you are able to see reset is 0 and there is a positive clock edge. And that's why at that particular point when J is a J value and K value is there, it will be showing the output as per the truth table. Now, in this particular situation, J is 0 and K is 0 and output will be 0 and 1. Now, why you are getting this Q as a 0 and uh, QN as a 1? Because whatever is the previous Q, that same you are getting over here and previous Q is 0. And that's why you are getting 0 over here and Q as a QN as a 1. So, you can check the truth table over there. In that, we have mentioned in the same way. So here you are able to see when j equal to 0, k equal to 0, whatever the value of q that you are getting. And previously q was what? You are able to see q was 0 and that's why you are getting 0. So here you are able to see that. Now in the next cycle, same value of j and k were there and that's why same thing is getting repeated for that interval. Now again you, are, you can see reset equal to 0 and clock is now positive edge trigger and your j and k is changing so whenever j is 0 and k is 1 what will be the value your output q will be 0 and output q n will be 1 now again it is getting repeated because the same situation we have given and the same is getting reflected in the truth table so you are able to see when j is 0 and k is 1 your output will be 0 and we have mentioned q as a 0 that's why that is getting reflected over here 
for that time period you are getting your value q equal to 0 again if previously it was 1 it might be change it it will be changing to 0 but now it previously it was 0 only and that's why it is showing you 0 okay so just check the truth table for your output so again output will be 0 and qn will be 1 now over here you are able to see reset is 0 and your clock is of uh, is at positive h trigger and your j is 0 sorry j is 1 and k is 0 so when j is 1 and k is 0 you are able to see output is 1 and over here you are able to see the change when clock is 1 positive h triggered so at that time only your output has been changed from 0 to 1 because output will be 1 for q and qn will be 0 for case that is j equal to 1 and k equal to 0 so for this time period until and unless your j is 1 and k is 0 your output will be q equal to 1 and qn will be 0 now over here it is your j value is changing and k value is changing so at positive h trigger it will be uh, taking that and for this condition where j is 1 and k is 1 your output is toggling so previously it was 1 you will be getting 0 again for the next clock pulse again it will be changing from 0 to 1 again for the next clock pulse it will be changing from 1 to 0 and that way your qn is also changing so this is called as a toggling condition so here you are able to see that for j equal to k equal to 1 condition your output is getting toggled so this particular thing you are able to see using this simulation waveform so, hope you understood how to go ahead with the Verilog code, how to write a test bench and how to check the simulation as well as the synthesis, that is the gate level netlist. So, thank you everyone. In the next session, we will be moving ahead with the XDC file creation and uh, we will be going ahead with the hardware implementation. So, thank you everyone and happy learning.